Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Morning Jumpstart. My name is Jason Meyer. And this morning, we're going to be working on some head, neck, and shoulder exercises. Uh, in the first half of the course, which will be about half an hour, and then we'll look at a, a few of the student assignments and student work that's been turned in. And then at the very end, uh, we got a little painting we're going to look at and give some feedback on that. So that is the schedule. Are you guys ready to participate today? This isn't a sit and watch today. This is a get your sketchbook and let's exercise. So I'll give everybody a minute to get their supplies together. See who's here. Mr. Tom's here. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, good morning. Hope you're taking good care of that studio up there so when we can all get back there and help you with it. Janny, good day, Miss Janny. Good day, good day, good day. All right, a lovely Wednesday, Susan. All right, guys, well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be fancy, a pen, an envelope, anything. Just get something you can write on. And let's look at some head, neck, and shoulder exercises. If I remember right, if I remember right, well, that's not it at all. Let's see if I can't clean up this mess I got here. That looks better. That looks better. There we go. <clears throat> okay, so this is going to be, let's see. Wait, I had that right the first time, didn't I? Anyway, we'll switch over here in just a second. This is going to be um, the format. We'll have the photograph here. And we want to look and try to find the gesture for the head, neck, and shoulders. Remember, we want to keep it as simple as possible and yet be as descriptive as possible. Okay. Um, sometimes the gesture is referred to as the doingness of the pose. In other words, what's the shoulders doing? You know, which shoulders front, which shoulders back? Are they even or is one higher than the other? Okay, what is, what's the head doing? Which way is the face pointing? Is the chin up or is the chin down? Where are the eyeballs looking? And then we've got to attach that face and head and skull through the neck onto the chest, which also holds those shoulders. So we're asking for quite a bit here, and we're going to simplify this. So let me see if I can't get this layout right. What button do I need to press here? I bet you it's this one. Voila. Voila. So if any of you are here early, it's not uncommon, rather than sit down and just start, that I take a page or something and warm up. And one of the things I like to do is just to get a feel for the paper and my pen, even digital, even when I'm working on digital, and see how dark I can get, and then how gradual and constant I can walk off that value. This is great training for your hand and your mind because not only does your hand but you can't let your mind wonder or your hand is going to go crazy anyway when I would come to uh, class I, I would sit down and probably do a page or two of these um, before most people even got there why? Because I had no skill. All I could had to rely on was my hard work. So we got a whole value range right there. Okay. Another thing I would do is I would just put in a circle or something and then try to feel as if I'm my pencil is going around it. You know, in every direction. So we want to get a feel for that with the cylinders going back into space, right? So even without the cylinder being there, I can see what would that feel like? 
as it disappears into the distance. All right, so just a little insight on a couple of these little games and warm-ups I have. And with that, shall we get going? It looks like Shakti made it. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. So we got a good full crew here. Let's go. Wait, what are you guys seeing here? What's happening? Buttons are being pressed. Okay. The glue that holds it all together, Miss Cindy Meyer. So I think with that, we are ready to execute. Let's see how big I can get this so you guys can see. And we'll start off a little slower. I'll explain a little bit as we go. And then I'd like to just to move through and do some of these. So which way is that chin pointing? About right there. If we find the center of it. And again, I'm feeling kind of across her face, but not at any of the details. I'm leveling everything off, right? This is going directly through the nose. Not directly, close. Now, next, I want to see the eyes, but I don't want to confuse where she's looking for the brow ridge. And the brow ridge is going to be perpendicular. If the chin is this, guess what the brow ridge is going to be? It's going to be that same thing. The question is just where? How high? Okay, so these very complicated things, we've got to narrow them down to a couple of little tasks that we can do pretty easily. Let's just say the brow ridge is there. So starting at our chin, where's the pinch? Well, it's going to be near us because this shoulder is near and the chin is closer to that shoulder, right? Turning towards that shoulder and away from the back shoulder. So for that reason, we're going to go towards the pinch. And then we want to get the back of that head in there. We could kind of think about going up the jaw, then skipping to the back of the head, coming across, and then this line kind of disappears actually behind the face. And where is the pit of her neck? If you drop a straight line down from the nose, is it below the nose? Is it below the eye? Is it below the ear? Right, so these are the questions that I ask to try to find that pit of the neck. And then if anybody was here yesterday, you might remember I showed you a little trick. We could finish this off by just giving a little kicker. And this little kicker will say the center line of the chest. So with this one little gesture right there, you can let us know what these shoulders are doing. Pretty tricky, huh? Pretty tricky. Okay, again, I know we're going a little slow this morning, but then we'll speed up here in just a minute. So when we come to this front shoulder, I kind of draw imaginary line in my head, and I think, okay, so is that shoulder way out here? Eh, I don't think so. Is it way down here? So I want to think about this for my vertical. And what this is, is the furthest point of the head. Okay? And so from that, I can compare where my shoulder is in this direction. All right? So if that's there, does it line up with that line? Is it on this side? Is it way out here? Well, no, it's on this side. And we don't know where, but we just know it's on this side. And then under my chin, I'm gonna do, is it lined up with my chin or is it below? Well, it's not too far below. So, and then I can check, does that angle feel right? 
And again, I'm doing this pretty quickly, all, all in my head. I don't want the viewer to see this or the gallery owner, whoever's getting this. The front of the shoulders and then the same thing with the back shoulder we will compare it with this with this and then also with this front shoulder and we see it's about right there okay so that's a little messy let's go up a layer let me do it with a different color and let's look at what we've got and then we're gonna start going a little bit. Hey, Miss Peggy's here. Good morning, Peggy. Good morning. So I'm gonna drop, draw over this and then we'll take all of this mess away. The middle of the chin, right? Which way is that chin pointing? We could see the middle of the face. Try to find the brow ridge. Go along the chin towards the pinch side. Right, not too bad. And then it's tricky because sometimes we look at where the eyes are looking, right? And then that influences us a little too much, right? At no point in this did I really look where the eyes were looking because I'm concerned with the bigger masses and the connection to the other big masses. This talks about the head. This talks about the neck. That last little kicker talks about the chest. Okay, enough talking. Let's get back to work. Let's get back to work. Let me find a pleasant little color here that I like to work in. And let's do some sketching, guys. Okay, so this one's a little tricky, isn't it? It's a little tricky because things are stacked on top of one another. But where's the chin? There's the chin. How's it pointed? Slightly that way. Let's go up over the top of the face. All right, and I, I don't worry too much about trying to get 100% accurate. Right? I can think of the hair there, but the back of the head is actually back here. We go up and then back. Okay, she's closer to this shoulder. So let's go around that way. And then where's the pit of the neck? Is it directly under this chin? Mm, is it? Is it? I feel like it's over just a little bit. I feel it's over just a little bit. Then how far from the chin is it? She's kind of on top of, right? We're almost looking down. So let's get the back of that head in there. And then look at this back shoulder. If you're to imagine the mouth is somewhere around here, can you see that shoulders above her mouth, right? Above her mouth, and it looks like it's just below the nose there, doesn't it? Just below the nose. And then the eyes would be happening up there. So that shoulder line is what we want. And then it's gonna come. So look at how wide that is. So that's telling us that we're, we're looking into that, that rather than standing up, she's bending over like that and we're seeing into that, okay? Let's follow that through for the other side. 
this shoulder's higher or lower. Right? This one's slightly lower. They're about the same distance. They're not very far off from one another, are they? Something like that. And then her, she's continuing to lead that torso leaning back, right? So just by doing that, look how descriptive that is. Then if we find our shadow side, you know, before you know it, You've got this whole thing drawn in. Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going. You guys catching on a little bit? Catching on? Look, Katie made it too. Good morning, Katie. Good morning. All right, here's our Italian fella. Here's our Italian fella. So what's happening here? Let's see. Let's see if we can't give you guys a little better view of this. This is head, neck, and shoulders. So let's get that as big as we can. And again, it's not always clear. In other words, you're not always going to be able to clearly see where the middle of the chin is. But with all the other information there, you can find it. You can find it. Hey, Wendy made it. Good morning, Wendy. All right, I hope everybody's got their drawing supplies. We're drawing. All right, so is there any tilt at all here? Very little. That chin's almost straight across. All right, it's going back into space a little bit, so we'll give it a slight angle. He's closer to this front shoulder, so we're going to go towards the pinch. Right, so the other side of the face is going to be like this because of parentheses, and then the back of the skull would be back there. Right. Top of the hair. So, we're gonna go like that. Where's the pit of the neck? It's more over here this time, isn't it? Which way is the chest going? That way. Again, so with this one mark, if you're successful, you get the head, the neck, and the chest. Ton of information. Where are the shoulders? The chin's here. This shoulder's where? Somewhere out there. All right, we got all kinds of stuff happening here, but again, this is abbreviating, abbreviating. This guy was cooler than the Fonz. And then that, that one's down a little bit. Make sure we get that down. Like that, we can Again, talk about the face, say which way he's turning, and looking. Okay, so a ton of information. Let's see that again, quote unquote, real time. Chin, towards the pinch, around to the back of the head. Where is the pit of the neck? And then what direction's the chest pointing? We've got our shoulders going behind and in front. Okay. We can indicate the middle, the nose, and the brow ridge. Okay, and again, 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 again. I'm like a little kid with these things. I'm like a little kid with these things. This was another art teacher who was teaching a summer session out in Morro Bay for the kids. And we talked her into coming uh, to Tom's studio. So 
we could have a model. And if I remember right, I believe her name was Diane. Diane or Diana. So what is she doing here? Again, what makes poses interesting versus not interesting, if you have somebody just sitting in a chair, looking straight at you, with shoulders straight at you, and chest straight at you, right? You can just look at those lines and go, how interesting is that going to be? If you compare it with, well, why don't we tilt this head a little bit? Why don't we stretch this neck? Let's tilt the shoulders. Right? So much better. So what we're doing right here is making sure that we do not have this and that we do have that. And this is the bones that we build everything off of. Okay? We do it slightly different with models, with figures, then we do with still life, then we do with landscape, but we're always trying to find that initial gesture, the movement. What's the movement? What's the happening in here? Okay. So she's tilting this way and this shoulder is higher. So that will give the pinch on this side. This shoulder is lower. And again, her head is tilted that way. So the stretch is going to be on that side. So we're going to go towards the pinch. And it's hard sometimes if they have a lot of hair, it's hard, but you'll get a sense for, and we don't necessarily need to include the hair in this. We want to think about the structure underneath. And then let's change direction. For that, let's show this up here. Let's see, she's pretty close. And over here, And then something like that. Okay. How's this working out? Can you guys see that okay? So that's what I got. I hope I'm working big enough here for you guys. Okay, so my clock says we've got seven minutes. Seven minutes. Oh, this is my friend Amber. My friend Amber. God, I got some good pictures of her. So, <clears throat> part of the problem with this is we're going to take this beautiful, beautiful pose and picture here. And we're going to make it into these clunky little lines. But we want to remember that this is a process, right? It doesn't look like a birthday cake as the egg gets broken in with the flour. Center. But at the same time, challenge yourself to take cat. Can we catch the grace of this woman? All right, so he's got, got a little jawline here. I'm trying to picture where that pit of the neck is because it's completely at the side, isn't it? It's at the side. And then our neckline would go like that. So, oh, what's part of the problem? Well, part of the problem is the pinch is facing us and then the stretch is back here where we can't see it back behind
So we want to show this. And she's more straight up than that. So I'm slowing down a li little bit, kind of showing you what it actually takes when you're really learning. Or just really looking. Shouldn't even say really learning. If you're really looking takes time. Right? If you're doing it quickly, you're not you're probably not seeing it. Seeing it deep enough. So what are we doing here? We're trying to show, oops. We're trying to show a slight tilt back towards us. We've got to show a forward plane and a side plane because we see the top of her head. So all of this should be going into all this information be, should be making it into this simple line that we're trying to make. And then look how this wrap helps describe all of that so well. Okay, that neck need to be longer, probably a little thinner out like that. Right, so the size, the proportions, all of that becomes very important. Okay. All right. Sorry to change the pace there, but I, we had to slow down for Amber. We got to slow down for Amber. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, last one. What do we got for our last one here? Oh, how appropriate. Their first album cover. Their first album cover. So I said we had one, but it looks like we got two. Okay, so what do we have? So there's some complication here. How are we going to handle all of this? Well, let's frame this between their two heads down to Naya's elbow. Naya's elbow is going to come this way. We'll go over the top of Izzy and drop down. So if I fit that all in there, and then the other thing I can kind of do is I can imagine instead of drawing them what kind of space can I take out of here what kind of space can I take out of here and so you can see very quickly I can get that whole thing in there then within this space, within this space, Yankee Doodle, huh? Yankee Doodle. So we have a head here. Whoops. Oops, I'm so small on the canvas now. This, these may be a little, got her hat going around her. But just the head right now where she's pinching this way. Coming around, the eyes are more straight on. The nose, where's the pit of the neck? It's almost directly below that chin, isn't it? And then, so she's still, well, let's wait here, let's wait here. So that's going around, there's a pinch in the back where, boom, where's this shoulder? It's pretty high. Is it over the chin? I think it's over the chin. Get that. 
Yeah, it's it's exhausting being so cool. Look how cool this chick is. Look how cool this chick is. Okay, so something like that. And then what's this cute little girl doing over here? Again, we've got the main thing, but let's find the So her chin's doing this. She's looking towards us, so the pinch is this way. Let's go around the back of her head. And where is the pit of her neck is beyond her chin there. And then let's show that she's turning that way. Did I get that right? I got that directly opposite, didn't I? Because she's turning towards that back shoulder. So if she's turning towards the back shoulder, then it should be up like this. All right, that feels better to me. Do that. Let it fall. Okay, something like that. I feel like I got that shoulder. She's more relaxed. She's done got those shoulders all up high. There we go. Something like that. <clears throat> okay, so that's how you would combine these gestures into a full composition or even kind of laying in. If you were doing a huge canvas or something, right? I would try to see okay what kind of angle is that where does her elbow in so can I get one line that encompasses all of that and then from this head it goes down her shoulder down and then she's got her thing and then down to the flowers on the table from her elbow to the front of the apple to the book to the apple in the vase and so I can decide very quickly, ooh, that's a horrible composition. Look at that. You know, if I was doing it on this thing, I probably want that. No, you know what? I, I don't like it like that. I don't like it like that. Um, let's move it up. Let's move it up and let's move it over. And let's do like that. <clears throat> but do you guys realize what I just did by resizing this to this? With a few little lines, I moved flowers, a vase, apples, an open book. You know, how many fingers do we see in here? Like 15 fingers, three necklaces, shirts, hats, eyeballs right into the most simple as possible. Okay, yeah, <laughs> members. These little ones don't quite, uh, they're still recognizable, but uh, seems like yesterday, but this was a few years ago. A few years ago. Okay, so with that in mind, as simple as possible, let us look oops at what I don't have yet. So what are we gonna do here? We're gonna give you guys let's come back to this for a second. Why I set up our next phase. How'd you guys do on the drawings this morning? Why I'm doing this, you guys let me know how that went. How it went. So this morning um, or for the second half, we're going to start with Shakti and we're going to look at um, her four value compositional study. And then Susan sent in a four value compositional study. And then we'll finish the show. It may, it may be a little bit after the hour, but we're going to finish it with um, give Peggy a little feedback on a painting of hers. There that is. So Let's just send that right over. All right, one more, guys, and we'll be ready to go.
Once warmed up, the drawing went well. Good. Good, 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 good. Yeah, you know, it takes, it takes all of us a little time to warm up. It takes some time to warm up. Kind of get into that art frame of mind. All right, let's see. How are we going to share our reference here with you guys? I think we got... Is this, a, is this our man right here? Mr. E? We got Mr. E? Do a little bit of that. Do a little bit of this. And I think we are good to go. Okay. All right, so did everybody get settled down from doing the exercises? So try to put your stuff away for a second. And what I'd like you to do on here is um, the drawings we're going to be looking at are all um, pretty close. So I'm not going to be correcting drawings unless structures are off, if the tilts are a little different because I encourage you guys to make those what you want. But what I am gonna focus on today is getting these values simplified and solid so that at the end of this month, we have really strong paintings. Okay, so I'm not necessarily looking at this in terms of what can we do to make this drawing the best possible in one way we do, but the purpose of this drawing is to prepare us for the painting. So again, we want to be thinking in terms of paint and how do we work in terms of paint with big flat masses. And then the other things we want to do is we want to direct their focus. Okay, so let's see. This one isn't yours. Did I get you guys mixed up? All right, well, maybe this is Susan and we'll go let me see what I got here. Let me see what I got here. Okay, you're right. You're right. Let's start with this one. Thank you for letting me know. So Shakti's up first, then Susan, and then Peggy. So um, I love the flatness of your dark value. And then I do see separation from the other values, but what I don't see and want to desperately see, it's almost a need at this point. Is that bad to say that I have a need? Is that, is that, huh? Is that too, thing? but I need, I need people to see this kid. I need people to see this kid and that hat. And that hat. So, the ultimate purpose of all of this is to get the viewer's eye here with a certain amount of intensity. Okay, so that is how I'm going to proceed here. So everything I'm going to do is for that um, intensity of image. Okay. So and I'm just going to work here. I'll try to talk a little bit, but I think you guys know what I'm up to. Um, for anybody just finding us right now, we try to work with four values. All right, with a dark, with a gray with a, the tone of the paper, our number two value, and then with the white. So this is our dark value. Let me clean something up here so my mind's not trying to blow up. So my mind's not trying to blow up. Got too many images feeding into my eyeballs. All right, now we got some agreement amongst, amongst stuff. So a very important part of this is this contour. 
and we've got that so I would spend like this is gonna be a good part because we can't just do these edges but we got to make sure that the they're in the right place and then I want to see the jaw from his ear and then I want to see this thing change direction even if it's a little bit or quietly for the neck and then I want to see a direction change and not only a direction change again this is you know Shakti has she's been at this under a year so you know you're doing incredible for where you are but to get the most out of this shape we want this contour to say hoodie then it may drop down to the shoulder right we don't want one two three keep that fence builder out of there right so what do we see here we see hat we see ear we see jaw we see neck we see hoodie we see shoulder that's a lot oh my goodness that's a lot yeah you know and then there's other parts of the painting where we don't have to worry too much about it but there's certain critical areas and this is for sure a critical area right here. Right? Because it's so descriptive in both detail and structure. Okay? So very good on that. I just wanted to point out that one side there for everybody pointing Ethan. Slow down for that. Slow down for that. All right? And see what we can do to get that right. Um, and then the other thing, the other thing is this dark mask is falling into shadow on this side of the nose, right? Nose, light, shadow. So when the mask is over it, it's light and shadow and shadow under the nose the soft edge and then this I would kind of you can wrap around if you want a bit and to show the big form but look then we go into the skin of the nose and guess what number four value then we've got the black glasses guess what number four value so we've got to combine all those shapes we've got the shadow from the socket of the eye the number four value right we've got the shadow as this the head turns that's a number four value now it seems to take a little bravery to put a mask nose eye socket glasses dark of the eye Right, but yeah, we're gonna group all of that into a single shape. And then that part is going to be more powerful. This is a ball. We want to show that shadow over here. All right, this is all shadow. And yeah, so what do you see? You see the highlight of the glasses, and then you may see a few little things here in the eye.
Okay, so let's see. Is that is that stronger? Yeah, the flatter, the bigger and the flatter something is, the stronger it is. And then what we want to do, again, I know I'm going a little bit over, but rather than rush through each one of these, I would rather show you. And then for a little bit darker, I'm not going to be so careful on the shapes here. I just want to show you for effect. Like if the bandana is in light, that could be like a little lighter gray. But all of this is still going to be dark. And I can make it look like it's lit, but I'm going to have it be dark. And that shadow is going to run down, so this isn't correct down here, but I want to take this light off of here. Why? Well, because that, as we stated at the beginning, we want to focus on the eyes, the part of the skin we can see, and the hat. And part of being able to get that focus is taking away the rest. Then what I can do is with that background, I can make it darker, but still plenty light. Now again, when I come over here to this one little side, be super careful. Again, I'm being a little bit klutzy here because of time. Um, yeah, and then show hoodie coming over. And I get, look how low I got that shoulder. So the drawing's not right. The drawing's not right. But let's look at impact. Yeah, I love the way you've got that light on the hat on the edge of the brim so clean. Look how effective that is by getting that one shape really clean. Okay, so the hat is going to be a bright color, but now look at where we're looking. Okay, this is why I wanted to run a little bit over, guys, is to show this. Look at where we're looking. Right? There's no mistaking it. There's just absolutely no mistaking it. Then again, if we're a little simpler, right? and some hard edges there where that light is happening. And then get that eraser and clean this up really well. And if I remember right, yeah, got a little ear action happening here too. Okay, so again, you're doing fantastic, but e even while you're doing this, we've got to think about, okay, overall, where are we going? And that's one of the challenging parts of this activity is keeping that simple overall in mind. Okay, great job. Great job. Keep going. Again, my drawing's a little bit off there because of time. But notice how the skin in light wins. Like hands, it's not even close. It's not even close, right? And I wanna say one more thing before we move on. And again, this is a general principle. The entire painting is basically right there. Okay, so we want to think about that when we're placing this and where we want this. And then all of the rest of this is almost just housing to set up for the party. 
Okay, we'll leave that at that. We'll leave that at that. And uh, I'm sure you're gonna knock this one dead. I'm excited to see these paintings when we're done. I think we're gonna have some solid stuff this, this month. Okay. Shakti was really nice. Really feel the shape of the nose. Let's go back and look at that. The, um, yeah. And that's what's important is, is feeling that underneath. That's a great point. Thank you, Janny, for reminding me of that. Because you've got so many things, right? I feel that jaw underneath, the chin. Uh, it's not just a black hole, but it's a mask. Good job. Good, good job. <laughs> That's excellent. I'm so happy you said that. It's scary. It's sc Wait, this is a little boy. I can't do that. It's not a little boy. It's paint. It's paint, and we want this paint to be powerful. So that flat number four will make it that powerful. Yeah, yeah. And then the inside edge, remember that'll be soft and that, that soft edge coming into it will make all the difference. The values really coming through is the thing. Good job, all right, you guys are so on board. Choo choo, let's hit this train. I love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, Miss Susan, Miss Susan. So again, the same thing and I wanna do the same thing here. I think overall, fantastic, fantastic. But um, one of the reasons I took so much time on that one is because we have similar issues. One thing I didn't get to on the before that's happening really well is she can give some detail of the bandana and the uh, hoodie with a number four black just by it being a a shadow kind of casting under that you get three cookies for that mark right there that just that makes me happy that makes makes the dark a more interesting shape it says hoodie and it says it's wrapping over the form so you're getting some um you're getting some return on your charcoal there some return on your charcoal yeah, not quite as profitable as, financially profitable as the stock market, but soulfully it's much more profitable, in my humble opinion. Ah, all right, let's see if we can get this thing to work. There it is. So again, let's just take a look. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, gonna make sure my layers are straight. There they are. And I'm gonna go, again, the drawing may come off, but this edge with the hat, the ear, so that ear goes down, cuts in, it's overlapped with the ear lobe sticking in front of it, jaw, neck, hoodie or bandana, whatever fabric is, is laying here. Okay, and then let's just flatten all of that out. The side of the nose with bandana, without bandana, the black glasses, the, the uh, eye socket, the dark of the eye, right? Our shadows, our eyebrow up here. Same with the hat. Watch that hat. I don't know that the hat, I think it's relatively straight up there, but from there, I think it's got more of a curve. So just watch that. Those things can be really tricky. You know, with the hair, the cast shadow, the little hair sticking out, the cast shadow. Coming around. And then, yeah, I get that. All 
All right, this kid is fancy. Make sure, make sure everybody understands how fancy this kid is. I've known this kid since kindergarten. He had more swagger in kindergarten than I've had my whole life. So we got to make sure that, you know, we let this kid... Good, 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 good. So we'll leave that. Oops, we won't leave that. What happened? Did I fall into my art coma? Sorry, guys. I hope I wasn't gone too long. Hope I wasn't gone too long. Yeah, so very good. So I'm just, all I'm doing is showing you what it looks like when we really even, because as Shakti says, that's scary, but look at the structure that this gives this drawing. And that's the purpose of our number four value is that structure. <clears throat> then if we just go a little bit lighter, you know, he's wearing a dark gray sweatshirt. Maybe a little lighter than that. So that we can keep that background. And I'm just going to group the bandana here. You can make slight changes here, little things we can do. But again, let's just see. And I, I think that would probably be more shadow down, but we're just taking this away. And then we can add form to this, but we don't want to bring the value, right? We can talk about that later. And then if that took our background down to here. All right, now this kid is getting some attention that he deserves. Right, get that light on him. Hey, can I have the spotlight over there? Can we turn those house lights down? So what I'm doing here is just turning the house lights down. Right, we're not cleaning the place. We gotta get them focused up on stage. And we can have little movement back here, but again, this little movement overall, we want this to be about this kid and all of his swagger. Hey, can you guys see that? And then now what, watch what happens. As I take just a little bit of this dark. Boom. How about a little focus? Anybody, anybody care for a little focus? Okay, and then I think I may have messed some of this up for you. I'm sorry, again, the, my drawing's not completely accurate here, but I'm just showing you a few little things. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, we were gonna go after our white here. We we're gonna go after our white. So that white, I would get a big glare on the glasses might not even highlight the eyeball if it's in the way. We can move that around. A little light there and a little light there. You don't want those two to be even. But I think that's pretty powerful right there like that. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny you said that, uh, Susan. I... um. When I saw this, that's exactly what I thought. I thought, oh, she, this was horrible. She can't stand it. <laughs> I get it. Hopefully that gets better. Or maybe you can find some different paper. Sometimes it's the paper or even the brand of charcoal you have. or It, it can make a difference. But I get it. I get it. But, um, you know, you could do this in pen and ink. Um, there's pens, kind of marker pens called Tombows that I like. And you can buy a few different values, and they even have a blender marker. 
So there's different ways you can do this, but the main thing you want to do while you're doing this is think in big flat tones, big flat masses, because that's the language of paint, right? Not of drawing. So we don't want these things to be line drawings. We want these things to be mass paintings. Okay. All right. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Good job. Good job. I would like ink. Maybe I'll try. Yeah, again, the principles are the same. The problem with ink is it's not so forgiving. So you may want to do some little pencil to work out any big problems you have. Then when you feel confident, you can do an ink or do some ink sketches till you get it right. Yeah, yeah. The medium doesn't matter. The way of thinking, whether you're thinking mass or line, that matters. So ink is another mass medium or it can be, you know. But... Um, it's all for that oil painting. At least in this class, it's for the oil painting. Good job. She's getting it. Janie's getting it. Big, flat masses. Bingo. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Good job, everybody. I have one more I'm going to do here, but it is a little off topic. So if you got to run, uh, I hope you guys have a great day. I hope this is helping out. We're going to do one more of these tomorrow morning, um, at least for this week, 8 a.m., Tonight we have Masterworks, and we'll be looking at some master paintings. Master paintings, not unlike some of these paintings and drawings, and finding what we were just talking about, those gestures, how they played it. How did they portray them, right? I feel those shoulders, but I don't see those shoulders. How did he do that? We'll investigate on that. And... Then Friday morning's class. So if you do some gesture drawings, turn them in. Even if they're from these exercises, get them in. Let, let me see them. And then turn in some more of these four value compositions. You guys are doing awesome. Okay. So I want to spend probably about maybe five minutes, five, ten minutes on this one. This is Peggy. And Peggy, this is looking so beautiful. So we've got the big things lined up. Um, I'd like to give you a couple pointers here of things you might look for or what might be next. Okay, the first thing I see is, is the value back here is way too dark. Let's try to lighten that up and lighten this one up a little bit too so that that value is up here only, right? And then that's going to say foreground. And then by getting these, letting that number four value, that dark, go through all that space and atmosphere, it can still be the number four value, but it's got to be number four value in this space, which has got a lot more atmosphere in front of it than this space does. Okay, so what might that look like? What might that look like? Well, I'll just come over here and... Like, I think you've got maybe something like this. Let's see. You may have a little bit of it. But see, what's the problem here is that it's too light in relation to the grass. So maybe underneath there's some darker. Or let's just go a little darker. So that we could, we could work with. And then let's go slightly darker. So we come up to here, maybe a little bit even more than that. Oops, where did that big mark come from? Right, or maybe I give it just a little bit more color. Okay, so those feel a little bit more distant to me. And then this whole thing, um, I think what we need to do here, Peggy, is so this grass here, um, I see what, what you're doing, but this turned out just a little light. That turned like just a, a bit light for the painting I think we, you, you're trying to make here. 
So let's see. So that's a little rich, but I just want to take a little of that lightness out. Okay, now that's probably too colorful. Now I can gray that down, or what else can I do? Well, there's that orange tree. So what if I took this value over to orange and let that orange just help gray some of that green down a little bit? So that's another way we could get some of that bright greenness. You see how that kind of just quieted everything down? And now you've got some great bright color here. But what we're going to find out is light without shadow has no substance. So can we get a dark orange? And let's see, where's this light coming from? I want to see where the light's coming from. Again, it, you may have it, even if you have it facelift lit, we need a certain amount. And I think I'm going to have, it looks like, you know, on the clouds, the light's coming that way. So let's keep that. So let's give just a certain amount of shadow inside the trees and on this edge here. And again, my pen can't get small enough, but. And then I want one more step before I get to that light. Just a little richer color. So I think if you combine those values with some of those that you have down there, it can give those trees a little bit more form. And then on the trunks, make sure that we have light and shadow. Those, those may be showing up a little bit. Again, I can't get my pen small enough. That, that may just be a little bit bright there. So that would be my two things. And then with the orange that bright, and again, it could be the photograph. We never know on these things with the photographs. But for some balance, I would get, again, I can't get my pen quite small enough, get a nice little white up in there, in those clouds. You know, that, that bright color could handle that, and then that'll also, if that green is that bright, could handle some of that too. So let's see what we got here. Okay. So the first thing we talked about was um, that dark green in the background, putting more atmosphere into that, and then quieting down that green grass value-wise. And then if the green was too bright, was a good value, but it had too much chroma, we could add some orange at that value in there to gray it off. For our orange trees, we're gonna add a, a little shadow and maybe some rich color in there just to complement all that light, that beautiful light that you got. And then try to get some pure white to balance that color in the cloud. And just a little bit, and don't take it edge to edge. Like I said, my pen was a little bit big. So I hope that helps out, uh, helps you carry this one forward, Peggy. I think we're gonna what happened here? What happened here? Oh, I see what happened here. I see what happened here. There we go. We'll get rid of that. We'll do that. One more do -si do Ah! There we go. And we're there. All right, everybody. So thank you for your attention. Again, I'm trying to keep these to one hour. I've been running just a few minutes over, but um, we'll work on getting that better. Come back tomorrow morning. You cannot get enough of these head, shoulder, neck exercises. Whether you never draw a human or a head or neck or shoulders at all, 
It's the idea. It's the finding the movement. It's the seeing. It's the awareness that matters. And then those things get translated into from awareness to understanding through your practice. So it's up to you on the practice. All right. Peggy, you are very welcome. You are very, very welcome. Thank you for all your love and support through the many, many, many years now. Some of you guys have been with me for a long time. I really do appreciate that. Janie, thank you so much. So we'll be back tonight for Masterworks at 7. If you're curious about more of this, we do have monthly classes. That's where a lot of this material comes from. Um, check out the website, jasonmeyer.com, all the information on that. We also have an online school, so you can get information about that on the website. We've got a live chess uh, sketch club on Facebook. We just got all kinds of things going on. So please make sure to check us out when you can. And until next time, a few hours from now, I'm Jason Meyer. Thank you for your attention, everybody. Love you guys. Have a good day.